Hi there, and welcome to the Cult of Cinema. I'm Aaron, and you're here in my movie library. Well, you're virtually here in my movie library anyway. And tonight we are going to do a second part to, to a video that I did last night that got a, a lot of response and a lot of people asking me if I would do a second part. So here you go. Uh, I spoke yesterday on the Vinegar Syndrome sale. I talked about like uh, some titles that I thought are, uh, are good choices. And um, some people thought, okay, well, I got some of those. Uh, are there any other ones that you can think of? Hey there, Death Bomb. Welcome, man. Uh, are there any other things you can think about? And so I thought I'd, I'd expand it a bit. So I have, I got another 10, uh, thought another 10 like uh, choices for you for, for Vinegar Syndrome sale. Hey there, George, which I hear is going to be fantastic, by the way. So keep an eye out on that. I will keep you updated with everything that I know at the time. Hey, Danuch, welcome, man. Hey there, Alan. Well, the, the gang, the gang's getting all here. Um, be sure to hit that like button. Uh-huh. I know you guys. <laughs> hit the like, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz stuff. Hey there, Chad. Welcome, man. Uh, aside from that, what I did is I took some of my limited, I took a bunch of my limited edition stuff and some of my, and a lot of my out of print vinegar syndrome because I want to keep, kind of give you an idea. Uh, if you're just coming into vinegar syndrome, something that you haven't been collecting yet, uh, well, I'm going to show you some stuff that's limited edition. I'm going to show you some stuff that's kind of out of print. And uh, hey there, Brian. Welcome, man. Oh, ah, oh, Godzilla Final Wars. I actually love that movie. A lot of people give that one hate AME, but I actually love Godzilla Final Wars. I remember the first time I saw it. The first time I saw the movie, there was no English. I just saw it with the, uh, with, the with the Japanese. No subtitles, no English, no nothing. Uh, yeah, because I wanted to see it back in the day, and I couldn't wait. So what we're going to do... Hey there, Mary. Welcome. Uh, I know you're a Vinegar Syndrome gal. Uh, so what we're going to do is I got limited editions and other prints, and I got a, another... Kind of a top 10 list of ones that I think are, are some great ideas. Thanks, Alan. Uh, that, uh, that should be in everybody's vinegar syndrome collection. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys. And we can start with the, uh, with the top 10 choices or we can start with the limited edition out of prints. Uh, either way, we're going to do them all. So where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the limited edition out of print stuff? Or do you want to start with, uh, with the top, top choices? Ah, okay. You want to get right into it. Um, Okay, so we're getting to the top choices out of prints. Oh, we got... Does anybody want to cast the deciding vote? Hey, welcome with 13 Wolf Man. Hey there, Shadow. Uh, oh, everybody's... It's all over. I'm going to cast the deciding vote in a second. Actually, uh, 13 Wolf Man, do you know what? Uh, your contacting me yesterday was really imperative because I had forgotten, hey there, David, uh, which ones I'd chosen, like, completely. So I went back on a conversation. To say, hey Vince, welcome, man. Welcome to the cult. Um, was uh, was trying to decide which to go, uh, w which ones I didn't choose. So let's go with the other prints first, and we'll get into the top ten choices, or maybe I'll go back and forth. How do we do that? We'll do it. We we'll do it kind of fair. I'll give you like uh, some other print stuff, and then we'll talk about some. Uh, we'll, we'll get a, one of the top ten choices. Now, when Vinegar Syndrome celebrated its five year anniversary, which uh, was a, a pretty epic time, they said they were going to do something special. Nobody knew exactly uh, what that was. Oh yeah, Logan, 22nd to the 25th. Big sale coming up. We got like four uh, slip covers that are gonna be coming for, uh, for previous titles. <coughs> Night Train Terror uh, and, <laughs> and Punk Vacation. Uh, but, uh, and there's gonna be a couple of VSAs, uh, brand new VSAs coming out. Uh, I will show you my VSAs that I got here, by the way. It's to give you an idea. So if you've never bought a VSA, I'll give you like kind of a an idea of what exactly that encompasses and what's, what that includes. And uh, so what's the VSA? Well, let's start with that right away because you asked the question. A VSA is called Vinegar Syndrome Archive. So basically what that means, Logan, is that it's a title that they print, they have a minute amount that they print. Unlike their other limited editions, you do not come back without the slipcover. I would love more Wings Hauser, Vincent. So we'll start with the first one. And here's the big thing is that the first VSA went out of print on no, the second one. Okay, we'll start with the first one. So there's, there's four VSAs. We'll go through the four VSAs first. Now, the second VSA went out of print really quickly. Uh, but they got some, they found some of them in, in the archives, so they're going to be putting them on sale during the sale. And uh, yeah, a lot of people that miss out on it are pretty excited about that. So this is what we call a Vinegar Cinema Archive. So there are five releases so far, which Troma is exactly right. I, I have four of them. I don't have Hell Riders yet. This is Savage Harbor, and that is Frank Stallone and Chris Mitchum, um, who uh, 
you see them in action thing. It is kind of an action movie, but Chris Mitchum is one of those. He, if anybody is, is like master the art of not giving a, and <laughs> walking, through, walking through a film, Chris Mitchum, he's mastered that art. He's got this quite cool, he's not, he's not his dad, for, that's for sure, but he definitely has that cool, I don't give a damn part about him. Uh, that's your favorite one so far? So what happens basically is they slip out like this. It's the most variable Blu-ray set. I, I really don't know, I got a, I got a few. I got a uh, Harry Potter set upstairs that's like almost as big as me uh, that uh, I got for actually for $20. It's insane. Uh, uh, every one of them are uh, hand numbered. So this one is 461. Yeah, it was meant to look like, uh, an, you know those old VHSs where you'd like kind of put the, put the discs uh, into his, uh, oh, it's his son. He, he has two sons. He actually did a TV series uh, when he was still alive with his sons. So when you have the VHS and you like take the VHS out of the, out of the slot like that, that's, that's kind of what this is. You know, it's supposed to kind of be reminiscent of. Now on the inside, you know, it looks pretty normal. Uh, Feature-wise, you know, there's a video interview with uh, Frank Stallone. There's an auto interview with this cinematographer. But one of the big things, and I think you're going to find this cool, Logan, uh, is that, because we know this going to have the alternate uh, cover and stuff like that. But this is cool. When I got my first VSA, I was unaware that this was a thing. Now, see, I knew MVD Rewind. I knew MVD Rewind would put like these mini posters into their uh, in, into the releases, and I was really excited about those mini posters you used to get, and I collect those. Uh, with the VSA releases, um, <laughs> you get this size poster. <laughs> Every one of them are double sided. They will have the artwork on uh, from a. Uh, from both sides on there, so you you can choose whichever you want, or you can, if you're really fancy, uh, that poster will eventually be in frame to neutral remember. I'm trying to get to Morocco. Hey there, Bill. Uh, so when I finally get to Morocco, this poster is all these all these VSA posters are going in frames, much like the Severn stuff. Once I get my allowance and set. So that's number one. Now there's four of them. Uh, number two went out of print really fast. It was the fastest one to go to print out of the VSAs. This one is coming back. Uh, yeah, he was a father of Casper Vendia. Hey, Pingo, welcome, man. Oh, we just—you just got. I just got here. I'm just gotten to the VSA part first, so you're you're here early. But this one right here, Evil Town. Now, this one went out of print. There are a few copies of this one coming back. I actually really enjoyed this film. It's it's a fun one. It's a weird film. Uh, if you own if you don't own Evils of the Night, I recommend you get both of them. Uh, Denise, you do. Evil Town is going to be. They have feel, some Evil Town. <coughs> hey, collection! Welcome to the cult, man. It, it's insane, but it, it is fantastically insane. Now, Evil Town is like Evils of the Night, but without the bigger actors in there. Uh, it's it's a fun film. It's an insane film. And for years, I used to go to my uh, local video store and I would see the posts for Evil Town. It was never uh, either somebody like ripped it off and never brought it back. Or, uh, oh, these here, this one here, Cubic Lover, they got a few copies of this one and another out of print one that are gonna be available during the sale. So get in, you know, start refreshing early during the, when the sale is gonna come up because I think these are gonna go fast. Uh, this poster here used to show up on my, uh, at my local video store. Hey, Leroy, welcome, man. And I was really curious all the time, like, what the hell was this movie? I used to go to ask about it to, uh, <laughs> it's the worst game played ever, uh, to, uh, to rent it. Uh, but it was always gone out. It was always gone out, whether somebody, like, uh, was always renting it, or somebody just didn't bring it back and we didn't, didn't have the copy. Um, it wasn't until Vinegar Syndrome actually put this movie out that I actually was able to, uh, to see it. It, uh, it was, it was a, a jump. A it's the only horror film so far that's come out from the VSAs. I really want more horror to come out of the VSA stuff. Um, now there's two more. The th I want to make sure I get them in the right order. The third one also went out of print. 
this one went out of print pretty fast too. Now this one here is also going to be back in print uh, for a very short period of time. Well, they got a few copies left uh, that they found. Uh, and it's this one right here, Vice Academy, uh, Rick Sloan's, like, I would say trilogy, but he did six of these films, but this is the first three. Uh, starring, like, uh, Ginger Lynn and, uh, and starring Linear Quigley in the first two, and Elizabeth Caton takes over in, uh, in part three. So, this is your favorite VSA release? You gotta love the artwork on this, uh, on this here title. And, again, I'll take it the, uh, Oh man, Ken, you got to rewatch the Angel films, especially the first one. Oh yeah, Logan, it's going to be available. That's the thing. They, they announced that there's a few extra copies that they found uh, for the Evil Town and, and, and for the Vice Academy series. Um, not a lot, but I'm, what I'm guessing is that, is that uh, what happened is, uh, is that you know, the, all the places are closed down, the archives closed down. So they found uh, some extra copies of uh, these that were probably going to be sold in the store and it's going to be sold during the sale. It would have been a good surprise, but I guess the things that... Now, I'd say, well, maybe it's needed to, it would be needed to generate some, some volume, but we all know that everybody is going to be like refreshing that page, going to the, going to the uh, website to, uh, to get these. Uh, let's, let, you know, let's, let's be honest. If you don't have this in your collection, you really should. It's, it's way more fun than you think. And it's not a sleaze as you think either. Um, if you, uh, you know, hear the name Ginger Lynn, you hear Lena Quigley, sometimes you're going to expect probably more or different uh, than you get. The first one is really, is kind of really cool and not, and it's uh, a bit more innocent than you would expect for a movie that deals with, uh, with, the, with the type of stuff that deals with, like, you know, some, it's not Police Academy. Uh, but it is kind of in that, in, in that vein, except I probably enjoyed those more than I enjoyed some of the Police Academy films. Uh, yeah, I, I did enjoy some of the Voice Academy films way more than I enjoyed a lot of the Police Academy series, to be honest with you. And the uh, fourth one and the last one that I got. Now, this one is definitely... I, I, I do think, well, for Evil Town, since it's gotten out of print and it's been like... It's, it's had a big markup. Uh, and because, like, Voice Academy 2, like, that's, that's the first one that has uh that has like a lot that had like more than one film on it so you know when you think about it like those that's for the price of one vsa voice academy has three films on it and uh you know this these here are now this is a cool one uh if you haven't seen this one th this one is real this one's really well casted too there is a horror is horror on highway five available now because i thought it was at a print but if you found more copies of that jump on it Mission Moscow. I remember Mission Moscow. Um, so this one here has Lance Henriksen, uh, George Kennedy, uh, just an incredible freaking cast in this movie. Uh, Karen Black, Richard Lynch, William Forsythe. So just you know, like just like think about that for a second. This is a movie that I had, that had. Did you really meet Ginger Lynn, Michael? How was she? Like how was she in person? Was she really? Was she nice? I'm hoping she's nice because I've always had a big, I've, I had a big crush on Ginger Lynn from when I was young. Um, obviously, I grew up with her. Um, Savage Dons was a cool film. It's an early like uh, starring role for Lance Henriksen and a different type of role for him as well. Um, he's a hero, but he's not exactly uh, heroic for like a long part of the film. Did you go to one of those conventions, Michael? So here we go. This is the poster for uh, Savage Don, which is utterly gorgeous, by the way. Uh, Elizabeth Caton actually does have a cameo on this. I think I just mentioned that, though. Uh, so that's cool. I'm a big Elizabeth Caton fan, maybe. I, I'm not going to lie, Michael. I would definitely. If I was in the area, I, w I would go. So no, no shade on that, man. Why not? You only live once. <coughs> so those are the VSI titles. Uh, so if you've never checked them out, they're going to be all available during the sale. Every single one of those that I just showed you there, if you're interested, are going to be available during the sale. These are not flimsy slipcovers. They're like super hard. And uh, the 
are really well done. The, uh, the artwork you can see is extremely, uh, the artwork on, on all these are extremely good. And just look at the, uh, at just the, the smooth kind of the gloss in the, uh, in the lettering as well. Every single one of these up here will be hand numbered. Um, once these go out of print, they are hand numbered. And, and the things, once they go out of print, they do not come back in. Uh, so after these are totally gone, then the only place to get them are through secondhand uh, sources like scalpers and stuff like that. And I can tell you right now that uh, any of these, especially the horror one, which is the only horror one so far, and the triple feature, which both sold out really quickly, uh, they definitely uh, are going to go to print again and out of print fast. The, the first yellow box, I, I'm guessing you got a bill, was excellent. So I'm really looking forward to the second one. Uh, I've got the Umberto Lenzi box set from Severin on, on uh, like pre-ordered as well. So that's another big one. Their site will probably go down tomorrow night. That's why I want to do this video tonight here as well. Like I had a couple of people ask me if I was going to do a second part. So uh, this is another reason I wanted to do it. I'll look into, uh, I'll go into the site in a minute. We'll look after we do all this and we'll look at the limited editions. I'll give you some recommendations on stuff that I think is going to go out of print. Troma, mean you think alike. So some more of the uh, of the limited edition stuff. I'll just go through a couple of the because it's not only Blu-rays for uh, Satan War. That'd be nice. Uh, there, there's a few ones that'd be good. See, it's not only Blu-rays that go to print. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome has had a couple of DVDs that have gone into print as well. When uh, during the last halfway to Black Friday sale, a, an announcement came up, and it was because Steph, Stephanie Crawford. Uh, <coughs> that I was able to, uh, to find out about this. And this is Lust for Freedom. So this was one that was initially put out by Troma and uh, they remastered it. They did a, a cool job and uh, they, only, they only put it out on DVD. And uh, they had lost the rights to it. So this was the, uh, so during the, the last half of the Black Friday sale, they let us know that this thing was gonna go to print and if we wanted to get it, and this, they didn't know, a lot of companies were like, oh, it's going into print. Maybe we should up the price. They didn't. It was still half price. So I got this for very cheap, actually. And uh, I grabbed one of the last copies uh, before it went out of print during the last halfway to Black Friday sale. Vineyard Cinema are really good at letting you know what's going to go out of print. And uh, much like this one here. Now, this one was a limited edition anyway. So we kind of knew this one was going to go out of print. It was an early one I bought, which was Cutthroats. And uh, because I'm a huge fan of the director, you know, John Hayes, is the, not Ron Presley, is the, is the director of, the, uh, of, the, of this film. And John Hayes has done a lot of really good stuff. If you've got, for instance, the, the Arrow video, you know, the American Horror Project that they're doing, the second uh, volume of that has a John Hayes film in it. And if you're a fan of Scream Factory, you probably got Grave the Vampire, which is another film directed by John Hayes. John Hayes is one of those guys that, like, much like the other directors, he's directed a lot of like, cool exploitation stuff, and he kind of dipped into the, uh, to the X-rated stuff as well, much like Wes Craven and people like that would have to do early on in, uh, in their career. So both of these now are no longer in print. Now the neat thing about Cutthroats is that they did eventually do, although you missed out on, I don't think there's features on this, I don't want to worry about. But uh, they did eventually do a Blu-ray. Uh, uh, they made the, this one part of the five, like five films, five years uh, series, which I'm gonna show you in a second. And uh, so you got to get a Blu-ray. So if you missed out on the DVD, you got to get like an even better version of this one on Blu-ray. And it is worth checking out. It is a fun little film. A uh, little odd, but, uh, but definitely like a, a little fun in, in, my, in my not so humble opinion. You ready for the next one? Don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'll get to the top choices. Let's... But here's the reason you need the top choices. Um, because this stuff goes out of print. And some of it, some of it don't come back. Uh, I've been on a few Vinegar Syndrome like, uh, Facebook pages and, and sites where people are like looking for these films and sometimes offering like fairly like big money for stuff like this. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome is probably the gem in my collection. Uh, that's not all folks. Uh, so uh, so it's ne they're never ones that I, that I sell. It, they're always ones that I go back to. Yeah, I, I got asked yesterday, like, what's the worst Vinegar Syndrome in my collection? Uh, I don't know if I got a worse Vinegar Syndrome. I, I got one that I, that I can't watch as much uh, or that I just couldn't get through as well, and that was Demonide. Uh, Demonide was one that, uh, and again, it could be the fact that the day that I watched it, I just didn't get into it. 
uh, but I just couldn't get into Demonide. And uh, I got to give it another shot because it's one of those that I feel I'm going to like if I watch it again. But uh, there are certain times when you, you go to put on a movie and you really shouldn't because you know no matter what the film is, you're not going to get into it. You didn't care for DMA, do Maybe. Well, we'll find out. From the five. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. And these are the five films that, that I'm talking about. So this is five films, five years. In the fifth anniversary of Vinegar Syndrome, they put out these films here. So any films in this series were films that were initially only going to be on DVD. There was not going to be any Blu-ray releases of these. There was never intended to be a Blu-ray release of these. But to celebrate their, uh, <laughs> their five-year um, anniversary, they decided to put out uh, some of these. And they put them at a really good price. That's the thing. That's the killer thing, is that these were not expensive to buy. Uh, now, very <laughs> expensive to buy. But when these came out, there were five films on it. Vinegar Syndrome, now, I got, I, they're in their sixth year, right? Uh, this came out. Let's, see, let's find out. So this one here came out. This series, this came out in 2017. So I'm not being. What, are, they, are they in their seventh year? Thank you, Dunooch. Yes, please hit the like button. <coughs> 2013. Thanks, Matthew. <coughs> so this. So what? What it was basically <coughs> is it was. They were done like this. They were two discs, two Blu-ray discs with uh, five films on them all together. There is no compression issues on any of these films, just so you know, because you're going to get asked that. Um, so, hey there, Dave. Yeah, the first film they put out was the Herschel Gordon Lewis Lost Films, I think, was the first one that they did. And I think that was done through like almost like a GoFundMe. Um, now, the neat thing about this is this one here, the first volume is called The Golden Age of Erotica. Now, some people are a little gun shy when it comes to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to going into either so to, to getting some of the uh, the erotica stuff they, they don't want stuff to put on perfect any go-go I was I was almost there um, but this was a perfect way to come in one there's nothing about this that looks like it's uh it's it's you know it's erotica toes or anything like that so you had these here and and they actually look kind of cool and kind of classy besides part of MERS is a good one I actually like that film uh, <clears throat> I like Pale Blood, but I'm, I'm a Wingshauser fan, Logan. Uh, like, I will forgive anything Wingshauser does. Saucy Pizza Girls is on this one, Hot and Saucy Pizza Girls. Uh, this was actually a really good one. This is the Erotica one, first volume. Uh, probably the first one to sell out, too. Uh, Too Naughty to Say No, which is directed by Suze Randall. Uh, Hot and Saucy Pizza Girls, which is a Bob Chin release. Uh, Rebold Tales of Canterbury, Canterbury which uh, stars Hapatia Lee. Uh, Prisoner of Paradise, which is another Bob Chin with uh, John Holmes Sika. And uh, Dixie Ray Hollywood Star, which is actually a really good film and it works on its own, even if you took it the adult things. And uh, that is uh, Anthony Spinelli, <coughs> and, uh, dir had directed, and uh, John Leslie starred. Beyond the Door 3 is fun. Like, obviously, the Beyond the Door films, you have nothing to do with one another. I think the original title for Beyond the Door 3 is called A Muck Train. Uh, yeah, but it's a fun little film. Uh, has a, is that, it's Bose Vincent. I'm pretty sure it's Bose Vincent. I, I, I have to go back and and rewatch it, but uh, there, like he's he has a part in it. He has a good, really good interview, by the way. Um, if I got the name right, <clears throat> but it's a fun one. And when I first started watching uh, Beyond the Door Three, I actually wasn't sure if I liked it or not. But uh, as I got into it, as I started like like watching the film, uh, I, yeah, I said I gotta rewatch this film. There's something kind of neat and crazy about this movie that that I super enjoy. And uh, I did, and I've watched it around three times now. And, and it's not like an old release, so I've got it. Um, a while back. So volume two was the horror and exploitation. So if you weren't into the uh, adult stuff, then you probably were going to like the, oh, Rad is going to, it's a Hal Needham film. That's the thing. It is an un, you know, it was, a, it was an unshown Hal Needham film. So it, it was never put out on DVD. I never got a Blu-ray release. So Rad coming out now and, and it's limited. Uh, it's going to be a 4K Blu-ray combo release. Uh, that's the way that they had to do it. Uh, that was in, in the contract for them doing it. There's a certain amount that they got, and that's it. That they cannot repress it. They can't do it anymore. Uh, Rad is one of those '80s films, and definitely by, by Hal Needham. AGFA is releasing another mystery title with a slip. The Daily Org. It'll be interesting. I'm, I'm really interested in seeing how the sale goes. This will be the first year and the first time that AGFA titles are going to be like recently. AGFA uh, films were were taken like the production, uh, you know, of like you know, pretty much selling them. Uh, we're, go we're being done through, or is now being done through Vinegar Center. And uh, it'll be interesting to see, what the AGFA tells, will they be 50% off? 
Well, we see like some of those could go into, into that 50% 50, 50 off sale because there are some really good AGFA titles and some definitely some ones that I could recommend to you. <coughs> but this was the first that horror exploitation one. Uh, titles on this one, we got The Mothers, which is a great serious Santiago film. And some people say there is a great serious Santiago. There's a lot of great serious Santiago stuff. I love Serio Santiago. I can I can bet Leroy Green like Serio Santiago uh, because I, I I got that feeling, Leroy. I got the feeling. Uh, <laughs> It, this is a cool one. Jane Kennedy's in this one as well. It's got a cool cast. Uh, Flesh and Blood and Bullets is in here, and that's a Carlos Tobliano film, and you know, one rare Carlos Tobliano and none adult film. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hang Up, which is another John Hayes film. You guys know that I, I definitely love the John Hayes. Say, uh, <laughs> Leroy, I know you, man. I know you. I know your stuff. Uh, Dungeon of Harrow, which is a, a pretty decent one with Russ Harvey, and Murder on the Emerald Seas, which is an Alan Ormsby production. That's right, it's Josh Brolin, isn't it? Thanos, man, Thanos. So if you're if you're a real big Marvel fan, too, you gotta have it like that. I uh, I think so. I think it's gonna start. As far as I know, Logan. Uh, now somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're right on that. <clears throat> I'm definitely gonna be there. Uh, like, you know, even though I don't think I'm gonna be able to get anything, or if I can get something, it's not gonna be much. <clears throat> I'm gonna be there uh, during the sale and. Afterwards, I'm going to try to do a live video right here during the sale so we can talk about what we got, what we're getting, and exact and the announcements as well. Thrash, I remember I had Thrash on, uh, on, I think it was an MGM release. It might have been an MGM release. I can remember the cover so so clear. Rico Browning, did he really? The guy from uh, like Creature from the Black Lagoon. And of course, Thunderball. I did not know that. Gleaming the Cube, Christian Slater, right? See, I remember these films. <coughs> I'm the guy that's excited about the upcoming. Uh, I'm I'm that's ups, uh, excited about the upcoming uh, Tony Hawk remaster. Uh, what's the one with Corey Haim? Wasn't that Gleaming? The, wasn't he in Gleaming the Cube? I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've seen some of these films. Were you a skater too, Logan? <coughs> You're a border. So volume three was again dipped back into oh the, the rollerblader one oh I remember that was that was super uh, oh yeah <laughs> yeah uh, vinegar said we gotta put that out he just dressed like a skater um, so I didn't dress like a skater I don't think but I am but I was so uh, this was the third one they put out and of course their adult titles on the five films five years tend, tended to go faster. Than the horror exploitation ones, especially like this one here had Dracula Sucks, which actually is a good film, uh, which stars Jamie Gillis as Dracula, and cast wise, you know, there's Annette Haven in it, Kay Parker, Sika Serene, so it, it is a star set of cast. But I've just always been a fan of Jamie Gillis's acting. Um, corporate Assets, uh, Amber Lynn, uh, Vixens of Kung Fu is a fun, cheesy one, Tropic of Desire, and Baby Rosemary, which is really weird, but I really like it. Because it's just one of those odd, strange ones. <laughs> the fourth one in the in you know, and the final one was the horror and exploitation one. This was the last one to sell out, and it's a shame because that's some really good titles on here. Uh, we got like Cry Wilderness, which if you are a mystery science theater fan, Cry Wilderness was one of the best episodes of the revamped version of Mystery Science Theater uh, with Jonah Ray. Uh, the yes, Cry Wilderness is that Bigfoot movie that you think it is. It it is, so really fun to uh, check out. Uh, Along with that is another Serio Santiago film, Leroy Green, here you go. Uh, Vampire Hookers, which I think is actually hilarious. And it's a very different role for Vic Diaz, who, uh, who's, who plays a, a comedic type role. Um, it's, but uh, it was good. I, I just, it's an insane film, but I love it. Evil Come, Evil Go. Uh, we got here Cutthroats. Remember I told you Cutthroats was going to make a comeback? It was, it was right here that it, uh, that it made the comeback. And a Teenage Seductress, which has Sandra Curry, and she is, yes, the sister of Sherry Curry from The Runaway. So if you're a fan of that band, her sister is in this movie. There were three. See, rollerblading didn't get the, didn't never got the love that uh, that boarding, that skateboarding did. Rollerblading was not considered. Have I seen the? I love the Runaways. That's a favorite film of mine, actually. I'm a big fan of the group, 
I grew up with, like listening to that type of stuff. And uh, so, uh, you know, Cherry Bomb and all those. And look at the, like the people. Oh yeah, uh, look at the people that came out of, uh, of that group. Like uh, you got Lita Ford, uh, Joan Jett came out of that group, um, Sherry Curry came out of the group. Uh, just an, an incredibly, you know, eclectic uh, group. I actually got, I actually had to go out and buy the, uh, the copy. I got the DVD of it. I, I got upgraded to the Blu-ray eventually down the road. Because it is a film that I that I really like. And anybody, anytime people look at me and say, well, you know, Kristen Stewart, she was in Twilight. She can't act. I say, go watch The Runaways. And then shut up. <laughs> because she can. Uh, <clears throat> All right, here's a few more. That was just right on the bangles. Another, like, excellent person from the from that group. Who for a while hated the lead singer of the Bengals, uh, but she did eventually get them all back together, and they made a lot of money. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they kind of hated Susanna Haas because she was really cute, and they focused, and the camera kind of focused on her. <coughs> Next up is another one that's out of print, but you can get the DVD copy of this one if you really want these films. <coughs> Restore Shriek the Mutilated. Ooh yeah, I got like a DVD of that one, Bill, and I would like to see. I, I, I like some of the Bigfoot films. So I would like to see that one actually done. This is Crypt of the Living Dead and House of the Living Dead. Uh, some people really don't like these films. I actually do. I thought, I thought these were a lot of fun. And Andrew Prine is one of these. And any movie that's got Andrew Prine in it, I give it a, like a, a quick pass on. Oh, it passes as in I like it because I'm a big Andrew Prine fan. But, and I think he's in, is he in the first one? Yeah, he is. He's in Crypt of the Living Dead. Which is a Ray Danton film. <clears throat> they did a song together, Lita Ford. Did that, didn't Lita Ford and Alice Cooper do a song together? I know that she did a song. There's, she was so good. I, I got to see some. Uh, <coughs> if you like Hammer, well, <clears throat> I, I think so. Uh, I, I mean, it's not the quality of Hammer. I'm not going to even give it tell you. It's the Hammer quality. Uh, like the, I'd be, I'd be lying to you, right? <clears throat> but it's, but it is a fun film. I, I, I enjoyed it. I'll look at a trailer for it first to see if it's like kind of something. I'll close my eyes forever. It's a fantastic song. Um, it's a favorite of mine too. I got a weird. I got a weird. Same as like my movie taste. I have weird eclectic music taste. I grew up like you know. I was born in the seventies. I grew up in the eighties. Um, so I grew up like listening to like everything from punk to pop. Uh, hola, <laughs> to like the whole like range. Um, so different genres and different like songs for different genres give me like that kind of that warm nostalgic feeling Pete Walker I told everybody to get this one before we went out of print this was this is Point of Terror <clears throat> Blood Mania and it's uh it was a really cool one what was really cool about this aside from the fact that oh, was it not, not Pete, Pete Carpenter right it's not Walker yeah Pete Carpenter <clears throat> oh we're going through the out of print stuff I haven't done my uh like my top 10 list for uh, some new some other choices for the vinegar syndrome sales so i'm going to be doing that vincent in a uh, couple minutes so you want to go back later on though after this video is over and check out the out of print stuff we'll do that as well wasn't this a fun one 13 wolf man with diane thorne of ilsa by the way in this movie so that's a cool thing i i gotta i'll be honest with you i i watched this one more than i want to admit uh, i really have uh i, I really enjoy this now the uh, the neat part about this one, and this one could be released again, but the thing that was uh, that was exclusive. Hey there, Chris. Welcome, man. Uh, was to this one here, where they did like uh, TV versions of uh, other films, and uh, that was uh, that's kind of neat. That was exclusive to this one. Here's that the did the film on Blu-ray and on DVD, and the, uh, the alternate TV versions of both of the films on a uh, on a third uh, disc. So that's also uh, kind of a cool like a bonus so they can put these out again they just can't put the T version that's what I that's what I heard anyway <clears throat> Nightmare Sister said yeah it does have a TV version hey don't don't knock disco man I I learned how to disco from like a, a record that my parents had I did not know disco was dead when I did it but I, I was learning how to do the funky chicken and all that type of stuff Michael Fick do, did I know that? Actually, I know I did not know that. Or maybe I don't think I, I don't think I knew it. <clears throat> Thirty Wolfman mentions 
some stuff on here that went out of print. Uh, this was this would be uh, one of them. <laughs> hey, uh, Hellbent is uh, this was oh, what's his name again? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna yeah Richard Casey. So Richard Casey did did like two films. Both of them were put out by uh, by Vinegar Syndrome. I, I hear that Last Ride series is really good. I got to check it out, Chris. <laughs> and this sounds way better than you actually think it is. This is actually a very fun now. Out of the Richard Casey films that are out there, this is probably the most uh, co coherent film that he that he did. It, it's it's a cool film. Uh, pretty much, you know, it's like uh, you know, basically set in the punk heavy metal era, and uh, it's kind of like the like the kind of the whole I sold my soul for rock and roll type of thing. To the inside of that one. No, this was, I think it was 3,000. No, 2,000. So there, there were 2,000 of these that came out there. I kept telling people to get these. Every time a sale came up, I said, get the Richard Casey films. They're limited edition. They're going to sell out. You guys didn't listen to me. Here's one of the Richard Casey films. The second one has a gr fantastic cover. Some people love this one. Some people hate it. I, I love it. I, I do. It doesn't make sense. No, not most of the time. Does it all come together? Does all the weird pieces that uh, that don't make sense kind of kind of come together at the end, and, and sort of maybe a little bit make sense? Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the thing. That's like me. You you just gotta decide, and you want you gotta take a you know go for the ones that you really want first. Hopefully uh, they'll find some of these down the road. What's that? A fly? Yeah. Hey there, Amir. Welcome. Horror House on Highway 5. This will be the second Richard Casey one. Uh, look at this cover. Isn't this an amazing cover? Doesn't this look like it's a, it's a slasher film? Well, looking at this cover, would you say that there's, that the slasher <laughs> was, uh, was dressed in a Richard Nixon mask? Or that there was Nazis in the film? Uh, or that there is a, a subplot about this girl that gets kidnapped and about these other people in this class that are trying to set off a miniature rocket? All, and you know what? All that stuff comes together. Yes, I did. <laughs> in Horror House on Highway 5. It is weird. It is strange. It is unusual. It may require a couple of drinks. But it's fun. It's really, really fun. And my, my motto, my credo my, for, for, for films is basically this. You know, entertain me. I don't care if you are a great film. I don't care if you are a uh, are a bad film. Just be a, be a fun film. Be something that I'm going to watch, and something that I'm uh, that I'm going to go back to. <coughs> and Horror House on Highway Five and Hellbent are two of those type of movies that I have fun with, that I will go back to, that are like, oh my god, this is super cheesy. <coughs> don't bore me. Never bore me. Movies. That's 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 the cardinal sin for a film. Don't bore somebody. I remember that was such it was a fun film, man. <clears throat> uh, it, it was cheesy fun, and it's exactly what you want from a movie called Rock and Roll Nightmare. Um, I actually don't own it. I, I should own it. Uh, I saw it back in the day, and I've, I haven't seen it in years. But it was one of those that I that, that I enjoyed when I watched it. And I do normally enjoy like the rock horror films. <clears throat> so I do, those, those are kind of like it's it's kind of a spot with me that I like. Um, and one of the last. And later things to su go to print, like surprisingly go to print. No one expected this to go to print because nobody knew this was was that limited. I don't think they thought the slip cover was limited, but uh, the uh, they didn't know that the uh, movie was limited. Oh, thanks. Actually, I, the only reason I'm wearing the jacket, I'll be completely honest, is because it's chilly down here. John Saxon did some amazing work. I love John Saxon stuff. I've got, yeah, I've got a soft spot in my heart for John Saxon. <clears throat> is this con connected? This was the last one that I know that uh, that went out of print, and I bought this one. It was kind of a last minute buy during uh, the last halfway of the Black Friday sale. And Reagan Nixon LG LBJ, you, you remember well, man. <clears throat> and I had no idea this was going to print when I got it. I just knew there wasn't very many of them left. I I, di I did the order, and I think it was like maybe a day later that they announced, oh, this is going into print. I was like, damn, I'm glad I picked this one up now. And I am too, because this was uh, like I'm not going to say the acting's good. I'm definitely not going to say that. Uh, but there's something about the amateurishness of the film 
that creeped the hell out of me. Uh, it did, and I've mentioned it on here many times, that this film actually did creep the hell out of me. Oh, Punk Break, the original, is actually a fun film, man. Uh, I wouldn't say so much about, like, remakes and stuff, but, like, original, Point Break, awesome. <clears throat> but uh, this one did creep me out. And uh, there's a kind of a really cool short film on here called uh, 20 Questions. Uh, and that's neat because it gets, not only does it get, like, uh, does the movie get special features, but, like, the short film gets special features as well. So you are uh, you get, like, a uh, an introduction and a Q&A about, uh, about the short film that he did. Oh, the black and white scenes. Yeah, they are creepy. They are really creepily done. Uh, they unnerve you. That's the thing. Um, there was a... Uh, not a lot of, like, of them have booklets in there, but this one does have a booklet. And uh, it's, it's a decent write-up by, by Art Ettinger, who does Ultra Violent, Violent Magazine. <coughs> so something about this one just really stuck with me. And, I mean, I was unnerved after I watched the film. Maybe it's just me, but it was just something about the film that just really got to me. In all the good ways. <coughs> now that, that's the out of print, kind of limited edition stuff. No, no, there's, this is the only edition of Rats coming out, Alan. So <coughs> there's no DVD coming out afterwards. There's no Blu-ray. There's no unlimited edition. There's, there's only going to be this edition. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and they were very, like, Hell Needham's Estate, were pretty much uh when did disconnect come out i thought it was 90s was it the 90s or later than that maybe it was the 80s 80s 84 actually wow yeah it does have an 80s feel to it it's an odd little film hey there dungeon studio disconnected man now from here on out <coughs> there are uh, there are 10 titles that uh that i'm going to add i'm mean, help me out here a third wolf man i'm making worse for you because i got 10 new suggestions for you um see the thing is like reading comments not easy for me because i don't have my thing open up oh no there's no like dvd edition coming out of that film <coughs> it's just that's the thing they, they, they have the rights to to do it like this with, with a 4k blu-ray release when those are gone those are gone it's not coming out again all 4K discs are all region, Dave. That's, uh, that's the thing. So uh, always remember, though, whenever you buy a 4K release of a film, uh, whether it's like from North America or, or the UK or China, well, wherever you get it from, it's, uh, those releases, those are every, the 4K disc itself is all region. Now, if uh, I love them both, man. <laughs> I love The Addiction and Near Dark. They're very different films, but I love them both. Um, if you get, like, always understand that the DVD or the Blu-ray, whatever, com whatever it comes with, because usually 4K comes with a Blu-ray or DVD along with it. That, that Blu-ray or DVD is usually going to be region locked to the country that it's in. But the 4K release, you can put on any 4K player and watch it at any time. Now, just remember, you, need, you do need a 4K player to watch a 4K one, and, you know, a 4K TV as well kind of helps out. <clears throat> oh, Near Dark is an amazing film. How can you just, like... Silent of Madness, as I, I heard, uh, I've, it's been rumored, John, because the Vinegar Sun is coming up with a 3D release sometime this year. And uh, Silent of Madness it may be that release. So we'll, we'll just uh, kind of kind of just like uh, wait and see when it comes to that. So you're ready for 10 new suggestions for, from Vinegar Syndrome? Some, some ideas of, of stuff to get during the, uh, during the sale? I did a video like this yesterday. Be sure to check that out if you have not seen it. Be sure to hit smash that like button, please. I really appreciate the we appreciate it when you do because I know you're here. I know you're watching. <laughs> so let's start off, and I'm gonna start like in nowhere in particular, but I wanna start like with like some holiday horror stuff. Let's do that. <laughs> so let's go with uh, one of their early releases that came out with the that came out later on with the slip cover, and, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this because the vinegar syndrome titles are gonna have their early titles did not have slip covers uh, so what they're doing retroactively is during like every sale is they're putting out uh did i miss something <laughs> never saw oh dear Bro, leroy man you got to see near dark there's some the bar scene alone is a reason to see near dark <clears throat> the bar scene is amazing uh, 
you, you miss a lot don't like like way lay him on near dark near dark is one of the seminal films when it comes to uh, to vampire horror uh it's got lance henriksen man uh you got lance henriksen in it you got the girl from uh, from aliens in it as well and uh you get bill paxton bill paxton right it's bill paxton bill, no bill paxton i think uh and uh amazing and jenny wright and it's just one of those like uh films that, that that sticks with you but there's a scene in the bar that well there's nothing blab about the film i cannot disagree with you more than like i've disagreed with you on some things on here but i can't disagree with you more than disagree with you on near dark and that's pretty it's a beloved film pretty much by uh by all he does steal the movie love those boots uh <clears throat> so this is christmas evil christmas evil is a fun little film uh it is a uh it is a holiday horror film that uh that i definitely recommend you check out it's probably the most christmasy holiday horror film you're ever gonna see and you'll know why by the time you see the end of the film now luckily uh awesome person got me the slip cover when i couldn't afford to pick it up during the last sale now here's an example of basically so our initially christmas evil came out like this this is one of the this is hands no not one of this is the worst cover that vinegar syndrome ever did did see this cover nothing to do with christmas evil was there a martian in christmas evil no there was no martian in uh in christmas evil uh, but this is a cool one it's got like some some incredible like surprisingly incredible acting for like one of these type of films so but afterwards they put out the slip cover and if you hadn't got christmas evil before you wanted to get it for the with this look at the slip cover man like just look at this and look at the back too like there's the art on the back of the film on the back of the slip cover this Christmas you better believe in Santa or he'll slay you <clears throat> it's a fun one I mean like it, Christmas Eve was one of those Logan that the first time I saw it I was I wasn't sure if I liked it or not uh but it's it definitely is one that that grew on me and the more I saw it and I think it was the ending the ending that really uh, like was the part that I liked the most I wasn't sure like the rest of the film but I really loved the ending because I'm like did they really go did they actually go there and they did go there so I was I was kind of uh I kind of dug the uh the ending of the film it makes it more like a like an origin story per se <coughs> so this one's mentioned during my last Yeah, they did a horror. That's a Blu-ray. Like, ignore that. Don't get that Blu-ray. <laughs> That's a neat way to find it, Danuch. But yeah, it, it, it is kind of a unique film. And of course, the uh, the guy that played the lead actor is the dad of Fiona Apple. So, Chris, we make sing the Dark Knight. Really? That's a unique. Kind of, like, that's the, that's that's an uh, thought. Like what's what's the dark knight connection like uh, i'm betting i'm betting there's something that i'm not thinking of uh all right when it comes to black exploitation uh there was the there were there's a lot of them and i showed you dolomite as a, my suggestion last night but there is the one that started it all joker origin oh ah, i get that <coughs> sweet sweetbacks badass song now uh this is melvin van peebles the father of mary van peebles who is in this film uh in a scene that makes a lot of people to watch it a little uncomfortable and if you've ever seen the movie you know why unfortunately it's one of the very first scenes of the film so basically uh this film here is a, kind of like the the genesis of the real true start of the uh, black exploitation genre and unlike a lot of black exploitation films that you would see later on like dolomite and superfly and stuff like that this film takes itself very seriously it is in many like aspects of it Melvin Van Peebles is an artist and it shows in this film because he was the, he was a kid man it is an art film what are the extras like on this excellent actually uh, a lot of extras there is a career interview a full and career interview with Melvin Van Peebles there is one badass woman interview with Neva Rochelle an exclusive Q&A that was done with them back in 2013 for, at the Black Panther Film Festival the real deal what is it what it was is archival making of documentary by melvin van peebles there's an historical commentary track with with uh, sergio mims uh and there's a booklet essay and here as well 
So a uh, ton of stuff when it comes to uh, to this release. And it is, uh, the features are really good. Now, what a lot of people talk about uh, with this one here, actually cool, badass booklet, look at that, is that uh, there's a scene at the beginning of the film when we find out, when we uh, meet, uh, that is Van Peebles. That was the mayor of Van Peebles in Jazz 4. <clears throat> Travis Crawford does the, uh, does the write-up on here. <clears throat> so when we meet Mayor of Van Peebles' character, well, Mayor of Van Peebles' character, it's played first by his dad, by his son, Mayor of Van Peebles. <laughs> Richard Ranch. A Richard Ranch looks more like him is what it is. It's like the kind of wanted to get that, like, the black exploitation. He started it. <clears throat> uh they're very different, but coffee. I'll go with coffee because I love. I, I, everybody like my age grew up loving, um, loving her. Like she was fantastic. Pam Grier was the name. Like Pam Grier. Everybody loved her. <coughs> the badass. That's actually a cool little film too. A short, shorter film. I think about forty-five minutes long or something like that. But a really cool little film. Um, now this is not. This is an X rating, but it definitely doesn't deserve an X rating. It's not a, not a, an adult film or anything like that. But the beginning of the film has. As a uh, mayor of MP was as a young kid, and uh, he's working in this like uh, in this brothel with these uh, ladies, and uh, the brothel and one of the ladies, the prostitutes in the brothel, seduces uh, mayor of MP people's character as a kid, as a young kid, and that sequence is, has always been something that when people start watching the film, some just gotta, uh, you know. Don't can't you know they get a little bit disturbed by it, so you may want to skip that sequence at the beginning. But it, it just kind of get, lets you know what kind of cat that uh cat that's H M man uh, that uh Mer that his character is the sweet sweetbacks is, and it's a really good film, really well done. I'm getting the slipcover ones done first, and then we're gonna go with the regular ones. Now a lot of these here don't have slipcovers now, so don't let that bother you, because pretty much you know the features and all that are still there. If there's anything that's that's not available, that's not there, I'll you know, we'll talk about that then. Pets, I, I love this film. This is just one that's it's a personal favorite of mine. It's a weird film. It's an odd film. I have a history with the movie Pets. It's um, this is a gorgeous. This had was had a gorgeous slipcover. <laughs> but it is a fun freaking film, uh, and it had a cast in it that that you wouldn't expect. Uh, you, like you get Mike Cartel from like from Runway Nightmare, which is exactly what you expect when it comes to a movie like Pets. What you don't expect is uh, is uh, Joan Blackman from Blue Hawaii uh, in this movie, or uh, seeing Ed Bishop show up in this film. But they're actual real like big actors or known actors anyway in uh, in this movie. It is an odd film. It is a, it is a strange. We got the eighty eight films one, but I love this film. Uh, Excellent, excellent movie that I can't even explain. I just I can't explain my, my love for it. It's just one of those that I, I, I can put on any time. Uh, there are a few films that like I'll, I'll watch. I'll, I'll go back to this. Pets is one of those that for some reason or another I just I can go back to at, at any time and I can just watch it. And uh, just like I never get bored with it. I, uh, I, there's never a time when, I, when I'm not in the mood to watch it. And uh, that's, that's, that's a big one for me. <clears throat> ready for the next one? Are you ready? Are you sure? <clears throat> Here's one with a good cast, with, with really good acting, a bit of a slow burn, but a cool film. <laughs> I think the slipcover is gone, which is a shame because it had a gorgeous slipcover that was deceptively good, <laughs> and that is The Killing Kind. Now, I'm willing to bet that probably Logan, you have a kill The Killing Kind? Because it's kind of something that I would see in your collection. <clears throat> and look at that. Like first off, you just look at it and you say, "Oh, it's a dead rat type thing." Or, and then then you kind of look at Bishop from UFO. You're not you're not correct and correct, man. Uh, that is a Bishop from UFO. But just look at it. Let's look at the like the intricacy of the of the art on the inside, and just look at the back. Did you ever want to strangle your mother? <clears throat> Killing Kind is a great little film. 
Who's in The Killing Kind? Well, uh, John Savage stars in The Killing Kind. I'm not joking. John's freaking Savage stars in The Killing Kind. Anne Southern was a famous actress back in the day, by the way. She is in The Killing Kind. She's a mom in, in The Killing Kind. Uh, Cindy Williams, who uh, you're going to know from Laverne and Shirley, uh, is, uh, is in the uh, movie The Killing Kind, as is Ruth Roman. Uh, it's a great film. And uh, who did this? Well, Curtis Harrington did this. So if you're some movies like Night Tide and stuff like that, uh, this is better, in my opinion, than uh, The Night Tide. Night Tide's a cool film. But uh, it is, uh, it's a different type of film. Basically, um, John Savage plays, uh, plays Terry. Definitely not like Ben or Willard. I know that kind of it kind of throws that, that vibe there, but, but it isn't actually. And he's like, he's he's a, he's gotten out of like a jail. He's hit for this brutal assault, which you know he says this wasn't his fault. Uh, goes back to his mother's mother's house, and the, she's like got a boarding house set up. Cindy Williams has come there. She's become one of the boarders, and um, we get to see kind of an, an unraveling of this guy. Exactly, there's a simmeringness, uh, kind of beneath. Uh, beneath the surface of uh, exactly like is he as bad as uh, as initially seems he is is he miss you know is 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 he not you know maybe he's a little bit maybe he's miss uh, maybe he's been misread by the system maybe or maybe maybe he's uh, something much much worse and you'll you'll find out because uh, it's a slow burn but it's really a good film it's not a rat film I know. Uh, that you that everybody's thinking, well, this is a film, but no, this is nothing to do with rats. It's a psychological thriller, <clears throat> and uh, I call it Southern Gothic because uh, because of the style that it has, and not just the style, but the feel of the film as well. So that that's a big thing, not just the style, but the feel. So when you got that kind of that kind of feel, that kind of uniqueness to it, uh, a Southern Gothic, it's got Anne Southern, so perfect, right? <clears throat> but the Killing Kind, if you don't have it, definitely want to check out Logan. I think you might like it. Uh, <clears throat> And it, but it's one of those there that really surprised me. Uh, super surprised with that one. I'll get to the Willow remake sometime, Leroy, because I got like serious thoughts on that, and they're the same as yours, by the way. And uh, then how he went so wrong with uh, with Black Christmas because of uh, because of uh, Willard, actually. <coughs> you guys, you guys are all getting to your animal killing films, uh, but do never no look don't look at that one and think there's like it's a rat film where he's gonna like whip out some some animals to kill people it's not that type of film <clears throat> now the next one is is fun it is a it's a christmas film curtis harrington directed that one yeah um it was a different one for for vineyard cinema up until up to that point i don't think there was a lot there's a few like but there are a few and far between you get like these type of films from vinegar syndrome uh you know they did definitely had a vibe that they went with uh but we've seen that like really like stretch out over the last couple of years of uh, Vinegar Syndrome is really like stretched in like in the in the style and the type of films uh, that they do. Uh, it's a lot for me. It's always been easy to do uh, to pick up a Vinegar Syndrome and blind and blind by it and be be completely uh, be completely happy. It's becoming much easier nowadays, I think, for an, an average viewer going in to blind by Vinegar Syndrome, especially stuff in the last couple of years, and be completely satisfied with it. And that's one of the one that's one of the greatest compliments I can give any company. <coughs> Blood beat. So, although it may not show it well, this movie is about a ghost samurai and possession. It's set at Christmas, so here you got yourself another Christmas horror movie. Every, you're, I'm always looking for like new like holiday horror films, whether it be Christmas or Thanksgiving or New Year's or whatnot. I actually really like, Amy, let me know what you think when you watch it, by the way, because I really like this one. I need the McPherson taste, by the way. <clears throat> Shadow, agree, <laughs> excuse me, Blood Beat was incredible. So is Christopher, actually. <clears throat> this is an excellent title that I didn't think it was going to be. Uh, I thought the cover was amazing. Like the slip cover is, is, is gorgeous. Like just look at the embossment on that slip cover. Look at the artwork. It, it's incredibly well done. <clears throat> but <laughs> this is actually done by the guy. I think that the Demonite. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, Fabrice. Yeah. So maybe i got to give Demonite another chance. Now, there is a 28-minute silent version of this film here. It is. Oh, Chris. Definitely check out Blood Beat, man. Um, of the film on here. There's video interviews with the writer-director. There's a commentary track with him as well. 
And uh, it's a French uh, US co-production. I'm reading that off of here. I didn't know that. <clears throat> but it is a really, really cool one. So why didn't I switch around the cover? That is a samurai, Logan. That is a ghost samurai that just possesses somebody throughout this film. There's the other artwork for this, which I guess gives you a better idea that it's about a, a ghost samurai possessing somebody. Because who doesn't need ghost samurai possession films in their collection? You know you do. But Blood Beat is, is a particularly entertain, entertaining one. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> catches me right away. Apologize for the clearing of the throat. But I am downstairs and it is a little dry down here. And I've tried not to drink any of my tea yet. Hey there, Jason. Ninja, uh, not Ninja Thresh. Ninja Thresh is like more of the only a samurai can kill. Only a ninja can kill a ninja. <clears throat> more of a, there's definitely more of a slasher vibe to it uh, in, the way that it's, uh, in the way that it's done. Uh, you know, more deaths and uh, set in this, like, in this one house uh, during, uh, during Christmas time where basically um, this, this girl and her boyfriend decide to come home uh, to, for, uh, for Christmas to her boyfriend's house. And uh, samurai stuff happens. Bloodbeat, excellent cover, excellent release. <clears throat> Definitely recommended. Even without the slip cover, just look at it. Bloodbeat is going to look amazing on your shelf. And when you're watching it in your uh, disc as well. <clears throat> well, Lucinda Dickey's like in, like, come on, she's Lucinda Dickey, the queen of canon, as I, as I like to call her, because she is the canon girl, man. Lucinda Dickey's the queen of canon. Probably I'm the only person that says that, but <clears throat> I'm gonna take a little drink so that I can actually keep going. Because we got four more to go through here. <clears throat> Ghost Warrior, yeah, but maybe some Ghost Warrior vibes. This is a double feature, and it's one that I that I dug. It came out at the same time as Bloodbeat. Uh, I'm pretty sure these all came out for like an October release. <clears throat> and that is Primeval and the Lurkers. Now, I do really like this one. Now, like, full, like, disclosure, I'm a huge Roberta Finley fan. A Woman's Torment is one of my favorite titles that Vinegar Cinema has ever put out. And I think it, it it belongs in everybody's collection. Now this is a double feature that Roberta Finley did. Um, two films, were, and there are two horror films. Uh, I liked Primeval a bit better than I liked The Lurkers, I think, if I got them right. Uh, but I thought both of them were actually really cool films. And uh, I would like to go back and rewatch them again. I've only rewatched them, I've probably watched them twice since I, uh, since I got them. See, this is why I don't get through all my films. I end up watching films that I like more than once. <clears throat> but uh, this one here is a cool one. And it looks nothing like, this cover looks nothing like The Pit and the Pendulum. Just, uh, just, just saying. Nothing like Full Moon's Pit and the Pendulum. <clears throat> Primeval. Uh, no, no, this is a different one, actually. Um, Devil Worshipping Clergyman Stalking the City. Oh my God, it looks psychotic when you do that. <clears throat> but uh, it, it's a cool one. It's got some great features, including a uh, commentary on Primeval with Roberta Finley. Uh, isolated soundtrack, so if you're a fan of Twilight Time, <clears throat> they're getting into the isolated soundtrack thing here for the films. Uh, theatrical trailers and uh, some cool stuff. There we go. So let's harken back to the VSAs at the beginning of this video. <clears throat> There's one that went out of print. And it had a connection to a film that Vinegar Cinema had already put out. Evil Town was connected to another movie <coughs> with a similar name and a much sim and a very similar plot. They're pretty much kind of the same film with different actors and stuff, and with sw slight s changes in the plot. This is a favorite of mine. This is one of my favorite covers, and uh, I just just look at this cover. I'm I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just wanting you to look at this for a second. This is Evils of the Night. I love this movie. Uh, I really do. I, I love this film. It is an excellent, excellent film. Uh, Cast-wise, you got like John Carradine, Tina Louise. We got Tina Louise coming back again. Uh, Julie Newmar, Amber Lynn. There's a scene. This Aldo Ray, but uh, Neville Brand is in this, which he's not even mentioned here, which is a shame. He's such a good actor. <clears throat> so just look at this movie. So look at this cover. So you got this buxom girl, obviously, with some like undead hands. 
the Millennium Falcon. <clears throat> Did everybody notice the uh, <laughs> the Millennium Falcon in the uh, <laughs> in the pictures? A lot of people actually don't. You know that? <clears throat> like people, you go, yeah, isn't that the cover? Isn't that the poster that the Millennium Falcon on it? <clears throat> yeah, Ginger McGillings Island is in this movie, working right alongside John Carradine and Julie Newmar. Like not not even like not even joking. All these actors <clears throat> are in uh, this film. I, I, I don't think they got sued. I don't know. It was set, probably it was such a low budget film, even though it had some big actors in it, right? <clears throat> that the uh, <clears throat> that they just got away with it. <laughs> well, I I do have I am Canadian, and uh, so is uh, Max Hedrum. <laughs> But no, it's not the first time we got the Max Headroom thing. I love the artwork on this. There is not an, an interior artwork so much on this as there is like a, just a, a picture. I'll, I'll show you. But it's a cool picture, so there you go. I really, really like Evils of the Night. I actually like it more than Evil Town. I know Shadow is probably going to be... <laughs> I, but I do. I like them both. But I do like Eve of the Night just a bit better. Uh, just because the cast is so good in Eve of the Night. And if you don't have Eve of the Night and you're getting ready to pick up Evil Town, pick up Eve of the Night too. Uh, double feature. <clears throat> or do it like one, one night and one the next night. Because it is a really cool one. And I strongly recommend this as a title that you pick up if you don't have it. It is fun. <clears throat> mm -hmm. There's a black man. Well, there's a black man in Blu-ray that's supposed to be coming, Jason, from uh, Severn Films. <clears throat> there's no, they have not announced it yet, and as far as I know, but uh, it was kind of like way more than hinted at during one of their Severn, uh, Severn Cellar that they did. And there's a big in, like announcement coming out tomorrow, which we'll uh, talk about by the way. So for sale on Amazon? Did you really? Did Amazon slip up and put out one early? Because the only thing that they put out from, uh, <clears throat> which Amazon? No, no, the cover's not out of print. There's the thing, man. You can still get this with, with the Millennium Falcon. You don't have this one, Dungeon? Man, get this one here while the Millennium Falcon is still, <laughs> still until nobody's realized it. So Disney hasn't realized it, so definitely got it. <clears throat> like, you them more versus terrible. The sale is from the 22nd, Alan, to the 25th. So this, uh, this Friday, the sale's gonna start. It'll be interesting. Want another crazy film that's super fun and weird? Well, Norman J. Warren made Bloody New Year. What is Bloody New Year? It's crazy. It's insane. Might involve some time travel. I'm not, not even joking there. And for me, when I watched this film, I was like, well, this is Norman J. Ward's version of The Shining. Uh, <clears throat> like, in a very loose way. Uh, but I, it is a cool little film. Basically, there's these people that antagonize uh, some, uh, some carnies, basically. Uh, they run off and end up on an island, which, uh, which is kind of haunted. And stuff starts to happen. People start to disappear. People start to die. There's a time vortex. Uh, within this film Your favorite I actually I love this film. Uh, I, I really do the prey is his is his best film best made film, but uh, Bloody New Year is his most entertaining film in my opinion It's his most entertaining film that he put out in a weird way like don't think it's like gonna be like the quality of the shining or uh, But in like the haunted hotel type of way. It's like uh, it's definitely kind of like as, as a shining type of feel when it comes to that Blood Near is a cool one, man. Oh, yeah, it is definitely one, Chris, to look into. <clears throat> it's uh, not a lot of features, but there's a cool commentary with, with director Norman J. Warren. And uh, people usually remember Bloody New Year uh, because of uh, this right here. So this was a, uh, the case that was on it, the VHS case, for years. And, uh, and a lot of, oh, Prey, man, you definitely got to check out Prey. It's really good. It's a really great film. <clears throat> So yeah, as Bloody Near is, is a fun film, Prey is a quality film. It's well made, it's well acted, extremely well done, has a great kicker of an ending, 
And uh, I will always go by, uh, I, will, I will say, you know, grab, pray. Bloody New Year, definitely one to check out, guys. I like the artwork on this, too. I don't know if everybody, I don't think anybody really understood all of what happened in Bloody New Year, but it's such a fun ride that it doesn't matter. And like, let's say, like I go again, if you like it, if you enjoy it, if you're having fun with it, that's what counts. <clears throat> you don't always have to understand everything. You don't always have to like, like, uh, it doesn't always have to be like, it doesn't have to be Stanley Kubrick level. Uh, it just got to be fun. That's the, at the end of the day, you're having fun with that movie. That's all you need. That's what you need. You need fun. Actually, Hunt, that's not far from the, uh, from what happened at one point. I, uh, I was living in, uh, in Cornerbrook and the theater closed down and uh, I uh, wanted to uh, actually open up. I wanted to buy the theater and do like kind of a retro theater. That's what I, uh, I didn't have the, the bones at the time to do it, didn't have cash to do it, but it was something that I was looking into. So it, I would definitely do something like that. And yeah, the indicator put in a great box of Norma J. Warren, which included uh, in Seminoid as well. Unfortunately, was that they couldn't get the rights to it, which Screen Factory put out. Now, <laughs> actually, it wasn't bashing Kubrick, just the opposite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Night Beast. I could not, in good conscience, not put Night Beast on one of these lists. I'm a Don Dohler fan. The Fiend's probably my favorite Don Dohler film, but uh, this is probably the most accessible Don Dohler film. Who is Don Dohler? Well, Don Dohler is a... Uh, a low-budget uh, director or writer that uh, and that this is probably <laughs> his his highest budgeted film I'm pretty sure this is his highest budgeted film actually his movies were usually I had a lot of his family in them usually a lot of bad acting uh, but there was a lot of charm to the to this micro budgeted stuff and Night Beast was one of those it has this it's insane. It's bloody. It, 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 it's cool. It's fun. Uh, you prefer the '50s vibe or the remake? I love them both, but I'll go with the remake. <clears throat> but yeah, and it's got a Star Trek connection, or a Star Wars connection, or both, right? Uh, because you know who who worked on this film would do uh, a soundtrack partially composed by J.J. Abrams. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, sneak. J.J. Abrams worked on this film. Good <laughs> big trouble, little China. Uh, trust me, it's much more low budget than that once you get to see it. Uh, but it is a fun film. Uh, you'll have a blast watching it. Just one of those cool, kind of like super cheesy, super fun little little films. Like how can you not love? Love. Look at that. How can you not love Night Beast? I do. I love this film. I think I lost like five viewers when I said I thought I liked Night Beast. So maybe maybe there's some non Don Dollar fans out there, but shame on you, non Don Dollar fans, because Night Beast is a lot of fun. And last but not least, in my ten more to choose from, did it really? Uh, it's been a while since I've seen this one. You gotta watch this one. is another kind of cool, wacky, strange, unusual film that you're going to kind of love. You might hate yourself for it, but you're, kind of, you're going to kind of love it. The effects are horrible. The actors are shockingly big. <clears throat> and it's a ton of fun. And that is Uninvited. Uninvited is such a cool little film. Oh, I love that documentary, actually. I saw a documentary. I don't know, it's on Shutter or something like that, a side documentary, but uh, I don't think it's on there now. But, uh, but I remember watching it. I love to own the documentary. But this is a Graydon Clark film. There's another Graydon Clark film that they put out called Wacko. If you have to choose between Wacko or this, I would go with this. But uh, it's, a, it's, it's up to you on which you go with. Uh, Wacko has a, better, has a bigger cast, a better cast. But this one does have George Kennedy, Alex Kors in this one. Uh, Clue Gallagher, uh, incredible uh, cast, some horrible special effects, but definitely, definitely fun. 
just definitely a really, really fun film. If you've never seen The Uninvited, I really recommend you check out The Uninvited. Look at this cover too. Either way, you're getting like super cat cheesiness on the cover. How can you not totally 110% love something like that? And there you go. So when your movie is named, named Uninvited, here are 10 choices for the Vinegar Syndrome sale. Stuff to definitely pick up. Vinegar Center, the website, will probably soon be going down for a couple of days. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. Mm -hmm. So what you can do right now, this is the little thing that I always try to recommend that you do. I went out right now. You're watching this. Do it after this. <laughs> um, is you go in, you look around, you find some stuff that you like, some stuff that you really want to get. Maybe there's a couple titles from here. Maybe it's a couple titles from the video that I showed you last night. <clears throat> you put them in your cart. You put them in your cart now. Sign in first. Put them in your cart. Then when it comes time, you refresh in. Bam. You go in. You start putting the other stuff that you want in the cart. Now let's uh, take a quick look. Uh, I'm going to just gonna take off the comments. For, like I'll see the comments here. Uh, but um, let's take a little quick look at the Vinegar Center website. And let's just see the some of the limited edition stuff to see how it... Uh, how it's going right now because I know there's some stuff oh my god I cannot spell tonight that's actually kind of like selling out so let's go to the Vinegar Center website and we'll look at their uh, their limited edition so as you can see um, punk vacation is definitely oh, so you can't see punk vacation is definitely one of the slips that's that are coming from uh, from that Oh, come on, come on. Not staff picks. I want the limitations. Come on, please. As far as AGFA titles go, like, just to go through really quickly. <laughs> um, the uh, Scary Movies, cool little title. Uh, effects definitely uh, definitely a cool one to get. Uh, this is one I want. Wicked World, by the way, if you're a fan of, of the movie Things, like I am. Uh, Barry, you know, Barry Gillis made that film. Uh, so that's kind of a given for uh, me, like one that I definitely got to pick up down the road. Uh, I like, I really like Lady Street Fighter. If you're, hey, Leroy, Lady Street Fighter, Renee Harmon. You get to see her, uh, her street fighting skills. She will... She will get. She will get nude. She will kind of sound like she's the uh, the mother to the guy from the room, uh, in her accent. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's an interesting one. And if you're a fan of Ed Wood, take it and trade is there as well. And Blood Lake, which is only put on DVD. Uh, but if these go on sale, like for instance, this is a half price sale, and Blood Lake, which is originally nineteen ninety nine, because remember, so it's half price off the regular price, is going to be down to ten dollars. Who can't pick up Blood Lake at a ten dollar price point? Uh, Definitely worth checking out. Okay, here we go. Let's get to the limited edition stuff and see some stuff that I think are going to go to print. Films of Sarah Jacobson. I don't have that one yet, uh, Shadow. It's one that I that I would like. AJFA has such great titles, <laughs> according to the room. Um, so stuff that are that's going down, getting down there. Or uh, stuff that I'm uh, that I'm interested in. Well, candy snatchers. Like there's a lot of candy snatchers there. I don't have the Zodiac Killer. Uh, I really want the Zodiac Killer. I know the history behind it, and for that alone, I want the film. Uh, here's a, like there was no Zodiac Killer being caught at the time. I do need Beware My Brethren. I hear that that's a film that I've wanted for a long time, right, man? And uh, it is definitely getting getting lower on the slip. So when you're looking at movies to pick up that are that have that have like gone down lower on slips, Beware My Brethren, by the way, has gotten lower. When it comes to the to the slip amount, uh, someone's I'm surprised have gotten lower. Like, I guess you know it, it is kind of a well-known film. 
I like Mausoleum. I actually, I really do. I don't have the Blu-ray of it yet. I actually got the DVD back then. There was a double feature DVD with Mausoleum and a Blood Song. Definitely. I would, how was Revenge of Lady Street Fighter? Well, Lady Street Fighter is fun. So if you like Lady Street Fighter, you're going to see a lot of it again in Revenge of Lady Street Fighter. Think of it as a bonus film. The Vineyard is down to 360, 372. Um, that one's definitely one of the ones that, is, that I che uh, showed you mascara last night. I do still recommend that one as, a, if, as your first adult. If you're going to get a first adult title, that's definitely one to go with. Uh, Putney Swoop, which again is another one that's supposed to be fantastic, is down to 281. And Beware My Brethren, by the way, which is really low. Is uh, I think it's down to 168 or something like that. Let me just check. Maybe it's less than that. One sixty-four. <clears throat> Penitentiary two. If you're if you want that film, by the way, it is going. This this is when it's going to go to print. It is going to go to print with that with that cover, and it's a really nice cover uh, during the uh, sale. I I can pretty much bank on that one. There's only like 40 or something left or something like that. And shot. A lot of people like kind of don't really think about shot. Or like they don't, they're like, okay, well, maybe I'll get that down the road. Let's we'll see where it's at right now when it comes to, uh, to sales-wise. So there's 308 left to shot. So before I go, which I have to do soon because my voice is going. Wait a second. I'll be right back. Shot has one of the most insanely fantastic punk underground comic book looking slip covers you're ever going to see. And if you miss out on this cover, the slip cover on this one, you're probably going to kick yourself. So here, once again, in all its glory, and I hope it's really showing off, is Shot, the slip cover to the film. I think it's utterly gorgeous. There's some bossing on here. <clears throat> it definitely looks like something Robert Crumb would have drawn. On the inside, you get some cool, more. It's a fun little film. I mean, it's like it's an action film. Uh, it was shot for like around fifteen thousand dollars, kind of like a kind of a student um, budget on, on the film. I, especially for the budget that was done, I, I actually liked. I really liked it. Now it's a regional film. So, like, know that going in, that's going to be very small, small budgeted. Uh, it looks way better uh, than a film for fifteen thousand uh, uh, dollars should look. But I, I would. Dad joke coming in three, two, one. Definitely give it a shot. If you had any doubts that I'm a dad, all doubts are gone right now. So there you go. You got an 11th pick tonight from me. I gave you 12 picks yesterday. I gave you 12 picks yesterday. So you haven't seen last night's video. I gave 12 picks for the sale. I gave you five underrated ones. <laughs> and I gave you five adult titles as well to check out. Um, we went through some of the out-of-print stuff so you can see some of the stuff that has gone by um, and that we hope some of it's going to get back in again. We know some of it is because Evil Town, Voice Academy, it is time to get those now. This is the time. And I gave you some choices. I gave you 11 new choices to look with. So you got a lot of stuff that you can choose from, whether it be horror or action or sleaze or exploitation or whatever. Uh, Flesh Pot, uh, that's an excellent one. Andy Milligan, again, you ever want to make a film, you want to write a film, you watch Flesh Pot. You watch Flesh Pot and you watch Angel because uh, that's, the, uh, that's the thing. Uh, I would definitely try to do a video Thursday night for the sale. 
Is it Thursday night or Friday night that sales? If it's Thursday night, definitely. I'm definitely gonna be doing a sale uh, video. So basically, once I once the sales goes live, uh, I'm gonna try to go live as soon as I can after that. How is Seeds Vapors? Uh, I don't have the Seeds Vapors release, to be honest with you. But uh, it is like, uh, I'd have to look into it a bit more. I like Andy Milligan overall, but Fleshpot on 42nd Street was one that stood out for me because I, cause I was a writer. And uh, and as have I seen the Michael Shane films? Yes, I did. I love the Michael Shane films, Dave. I'm a huge fan of uh, of Lloyd Nolan as Michael Shane. I got the uh, the initial like MGM. I think it was MGM. Put out like uh, three or four of them on a on like on a, on a set, but uh, Twilight Time put out ones as well. Um, it's a cool one, man. It's, it's not like a lot of adult stuff in it, a dungeon, but it's uh, it's more like if you've seen Angel, and you know like the kind of the, when it comes to the guys behind behind Angel, and you and you're seeing like this this family, this kind of like this family, not family like the people by blood, but family by people like are surviving on the street type of thing. Uh, Fleshpot has that type of feel to it. So let me know what you think. Hopefully you're not gonna want to kill me afterwards when you see the film. I am Aaron. This is my movie library. You guys are the call to cinema for everybody that's been here from before, from my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for all you guys that came in there and hit the like button uh, or and shared it. You guys rock. Um, we will get through this sale together. Enjoy Godzilla Fun Horse AME. I'm going to sit back and enjoy some. I'm not sure what. I think, I'm thinking Maniac tonight. I kind of want to want to rewatch uh, Blue Underground's Maniac. I love that film. Have a great evening, guys. And I'll see you here next time because right now, it is uh it is time for tea